Hey everyone, Tom Hazard here from WTFFF 3D Printing Podcast and 3dstartpoint.com. I'm creating this video for you to introduce you and myself, because I've just taken this out of the box, introduce you to the MakerBot Replicator Plus. This is the next generation of MakerBot 3D Printer, and it's supposed to be vastly improved over the fifth generation uh, MakerBot Replicators. So all I've done is take it out of the box and unwrapped the plastic and the foam. It was incredibly well packed, as you'd expect. Uh, very, very strong foam around all the corners and then a, a bag wrapping the whole product. And then um, there's a box here that's a getting started, you know, box. So what I want to do first is I'm going to take my camera off the tripod there and I'm going to walk you around sort of close up some of the... Th the things that it's sort of obvious to see, what's different about this 3D printer, and also what's in this getting started guide, then I'll put it uh, back on the mount, so forgive the camera moving a little bit, um, as I then go through and follow the instructions to set it up and, and create a first print and really see how different this 3D printer is. So, again, uh, forgive a little bit of shakiness here as I get this in my hand. All right, we got it now. So immediately what I noticed at the top of the printer is the gantry section here. This is actually um, a, a aluminum, anodized aluminum. I don't know, it's a structural piece or just a cover. I'm not really sure, you know, the, this area is obviously where the extruder goes. It's the, you know, it is where the Smart Extruder Plus uh, will actually attach. And uh, you can see I haven't even removed the orange plastic clips both here for the Z-axis and here on the sides. There's one here and one here that are holding really the gantry in place, keeping it from moving and shipping. Uh, they still are using the drawer. Oops, I'm going to have to... It's hard to do that with my left hand. Oh, there we go. They're still using the uh, sort of vertical drawer for the filament, which you snap onto here and then route it through this, uh, you know, Bowden tube to go down to the Smart Extruder Plus. Uh, and really, from all appearances, the actual housing of the printer um, is, it appears anyway, to be identical and having the same size screen, same size dial, and two action buttons here, and then the USB um, USB flash drive for printing from file, um, it, you know, appears to be all the same. One of the major differences, really, are like I said, are here, and there's clearly a different structure here in um, the support for the extruder and how it moves us around the X Y axes. And then the other major difference is the build plate. So the build plate, which you can see I haven't even removed the foam that supports underneath it yet. And I think this orange is tape that will also be removed. But I'll read the instructions and confirm. But the build plate itself, um, the whole thing appears to be larger, although I don't think the build volume of the printer is any larger, but the plate surface is larger. And it's a very different surface. It feels like a kind of like a build tech kind of a surface. I'm sure it's not that brand material or it would say it on it, but um, it's definitely a different surface, whereas the existing um, MakerBot 5th generation build plate was uh, glass. And actually, I can show it to you over here because I have my 5th generation machine right next door here. Uh, you can see that that build plate, it's obviously covered with blue tape, but that is... Um, it's glass right under there and the whole assembly is uh, a bit smaller than this one so you can also see a little bit of difference there in the z-axis there's clearly this is a plastic molded uh, assembly if not cover um, and you can see over on the old one it's kind of a sheet metal uh, you know situation over there a different it's just some different components they've, they've clearly well, they're using the same, you know, outer housing, it appears, and the same kind of drawer. That's really just the exterior and the interior 
from all appearances, there's a lot of um, you know upgrades and and changes that have been made. So we're going to go through all of that, and I also want to show you here. So this was right in the top of the box, and it's the box that contains right here a quick start guide, some literature, a spool of filament. On the bottom right, that's the Smart Extruder Plus, and then some cables. I assume that's a power cable and probably a USB cable if you want to plug in your computer directly to the printer. So I'm going to take out the, you know, get started guide and our quick start guide. And what it tells you actually here, which uh, is to just check the contents of the box and then go to MakerBot.com on your mobile phone or your computer and then follow the instructions for setup online. Um, I'm a, maybe a little bit more of an old school type of guy and I, I don't really want to go straight to the computer yet so here on the back side for me they have an offline setup uh, for telling you what to do here and it seems pretty straightforward what they're saying to do is to just remove it from the box which I've already done which is kind of silly because well, I guess I guess you you would have pulled out this box <laughs> first before pulling the print out of the box, so I guess that's all right. And then it tells you to remove the clips from the belt and the rod. So those three orange clips that I found, you're supposed to remove. Then it tells you to lift the drawer and install filament, and plug the power in and turn it on, and follow the on-screen instructions. So I'm gonna put the camera back on my tripod here and I'm going to go ahead and do some of those things and um, we will see but really um, you know so far so good really in terms of the packing and you know there's clearly some differences this is not just the fifth generation machine that's uh, repackaged in any way there's, there's, there's quite a bit more to it and I'm hoping there's more under the hood from what I understand, the printer's supposed to go a lot faster than the older one and also be quieter. Both of those would be welcome changes. And I'm very interested in the build plate. I may not need to buy blue tape anymore for printing on a MakerBot. So, uh, let's see. Forgive the camera as I get it back in the mount. And you're going to see a little bit of my middle section. I apologize in advance for that. But, okay, that clip really pulls out quite easy. It seemed to have uh, been holding on to some belts that were there and keeping that from moving. And then there's this clip in the back that I've removed. I'm going to hang on to those. Now, I've never been a fan of the drawer. Um, I really don't use it on my 5th gen machine, in fact, I'll show you, um, you know, this is going to be a little unusual, but um, my 5th gen machine, I've actually got a uh, spool holder that I made myself where I have a whole bunch of spools above it and I feed them down into that Bowden tube, so uh, eventually I'll probably do something like that here as well. And let's see, I'm just going to get this set up again. Oops, maybe it's a little too low. All right. Um, so, but uh, for now, for purposes of reviewing it and user experience per the instructions, I'm going to go ahead and follow the instructions and put it in the drawer. There is a sticker. This is pretty interesting, actually. There's a sticker on the top of the drawer that says only use genuine MakerBot fil filament. Oh, I forgot to turn this around so I can see it. Uh, only it's a there's a sticker right on the top of the drawer here, which says only use MakerBot filament tested and optimized from MakerBot printers using third-party filament may void your warranty. Well, <coughs> you know I, I knew that even with the purchase of my first MakerBot 5th generation machine and as long as MakerBot has a filament of a color and material that I want to use then I'll use it 
and I don't have a problem with the price that they charge at MakerBot or you know for any company making a, a high quality filament because it really ends up being such an insignificant cost in the scope of your print but um, if they don't have a filament that I want I'm gonna buy another filament and put it in it and I know I'm risking maybe you know hurting a smart extruder if there's something about that filament that is not kosher or somehow you know something unexpected that hurts it and I'm willing to take that risk uh, even if it potentially avoids a warranty I want to print whatever material I want to print whatever I can based on what the temperature and of the machine can achieve as well as you know just the general workings of the machine um, so I'll usually I'm, I'm probably gonna break that warranty myself right off the bat so it's just the way it is you obviously if you're gonna buy one have to make your own decision whether you're gonna do that but um, I want to use whatever material I want to use and I'm gonna keep doing that so uh, all right so let's see power cord I'm not going to worry about USB because I, I almost always print from a USB flash drive, print to, to file. So I, I just find it's easier and that's what I prefer. So, um, alright, so actually I can put the drawer down now that I've threaded that and plug it in. and turn it on. Now the power switch is in the same place as the original and now I'm going to have to follow instructions on the screen because as it says here I've, I've gone through everything else uh, that it says to do. So it's going to power up, that may take a minute. It's funny how it didn't even tell me to pull out the foam from underneath the, the gantry uh, or the gantry, sorry, the foam from underneath the build plate here. but I'm going to follow the instructions just like I was a brand new user and we will see how that goes.